G'day everyone and welcome to the end of 2022 or the start of 2023 or whenever it is that you are watching this. I'm recording this at the end of 2022, the end of the first year of this YouTube channel. That's pretty cool. I started this channel, well I started it in September of 2021 but I didn't post until January 2022 and I started it because well, I've been making videos on YouTube for a while specifically about avocados and I wanted to broaden my horizons and explore a greater range of things which fill me with a sense of curiosity and wonder and that's pretty cool is the vehicle through which I'm doing that and I have had a lot of fun doing that this year and I need to thank you for joining me on this journey you know we've covered all sorts of things from trees to roadside attractions and artworks to history like why Pluto's not a planet the discovery of Pluto you know we've looked at why AM and PM exist we've looked at lots of different things from science or from history and from nature and it's been a lot of fun but I wanted to know what you have learned this year. I have discussed a lot of things that I have learned over the course of the year, and I wanted to know what you have learned this year. So, a few weeks ago, I put the question out in a YouTube video, specifically, asking you what you have learned, and I got a few responses, which I'm going to go through today and give my thoughts on them and perhaps share some extra insights. So, without any further ado, let's do that. Oh, and I should mention as well, before we do go any further, that at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about next year, but not very much, so stick around for that. Okay, let's get on to your learnings. So, Kaz Madison, responded that they learned the reply to Dankeschön, or thank you in German, is Bitteschön. They say that they don't speak German, but they use it all the time now whenever I'm saying thank you or you're welcome. And uh, I think that that's lots of fun. I think that yeah, engaging with different languages is a great idea. Myself, I am learning Spanish at the moment. I am enjoying it. I'm finding it, it difficult. I haven't learned any languages really as a child other than the little bits that we did in primary school which I don't have really accessible other than that I can count to 10 in Japanese. Um, but I am really enjoying learning Spanish and engaging with that. I've been learning for a little bit over a year now and yeah, learning greetings in different languages I think is really nice. If you're traveling to different countries I think it's polite. You don't need to be conversational because that takes a really long time, but to be able to at least use basic greetings, I think is lovely. And having being able to say, you're welcome in response to someone's thank you is nice. In Spanish, by the way, when someone says gracias or thank you, the response is de nada or you're welcome. So Dankeschön in German, the response is bitteschön. And I apologize to any Germans who are watching this because I'm sure my pronunciation, especially with the umlauts, uh, wasn't quite right. And thank you, Kaz, for sharing your learnings. I think that it's lovely to engage with different languages. Goggles M95 writes that, I learned in 2022 that despite what's often shown in movies, book historians often don't wear gloves when handling old manuscripts. This is because gloved hands tend to be less dexterous and are more likely to cause tears to the fragile paper than the naked hand. And this is something which I have found to be really interesting as well. If you've seen people handling old things, such as in museums or on YouTube channels, uh, you'll often see that they are using gloves to handle these ancient artifacts. And there's a number of reasons why they would do that. First is that they don't want to cause any physical damage. And um, they also don't want the chemicals from our fingers to eat away at the material that the artifact is made of. There are oils and there are things that we come in contact with. Our hands are really are filthy and touching things can over time cause degradation, which is partly why we would use gloves when handling very old things. But when using manuscripts or reading old books, that isn't really the case. And I think this is really lovely. You can see this as an example if you head over to Brady Harron's channel, Objectivity, where he goes into all sorts of really old and cool objects from throughout history. And you'll notice like in this video where he's looking at moon books, that when he's handling the books themselves, like the, just holding the books with the covers, he's using gloves. But as soon as it comes to turning the pages, the gloves are off and he's using his bare fingers. Now, why would we do that? Well, old paper is very fragile and when you're wearing gloves, you are less dexterous. Imagine, you know, 
it's not quite the same, but if you're trying to read a book while wearing gardening gloves, it's not quite the same, but it's the same kind of effect to a lesser degree. And with this very, very old, fragile paper, that can be a problem. Also with cotton gloves, there are you know, little fibers and they can actually get into the tiny tears and make them bigger in old books. And that can be a problem. They can also, you know, dust can be abrasive that the gloves come in contact with and that can be very damaging to old books. The book historians will, yeah, take the gloves off to turn pages in old manuscripts or old books in order to minimise the damage. They do make sure that their hands are clean and that they're not using any uh, creams or anything on their hands. They are clean They've often used like alcohol wipes to uh, make sure there's nothing on their hands to make sure it's as clean and dry as possible because any moisture, anything like that, any oils will cause damage to the paper. So they want to minimize that. There's a link to a National Trust article in the, uh, the, the sources for this video below if you want to find out more about that because I think it's interesting. Also, I've included a link to Brady Harron's channel because I think it's cool. Daniel R read a book for study called Family Ties That Bind and he was amazed to learn how big the impact of our family of origin has on our personalities, behaviours, values and decisions. I'm going to get a little anecdotal, I'll be careful how anecdotal I get, but I'll get a little anecdotal, but I, I kind of think of, you know, the interactions that we have with others, uh, other people rub off on us in different ways and that's like every colleagues, you know, just strangers if there is an interaction um, and, you know, that makes sense for the people who we spend the majority of our most developmental and f formative years with is going to cause some significant shapings of us and you know all the evidence that there, there is that what we do at home really does form who we are and I know a lot of people who have challenges with that or changing the way they are perhaps if they didn't have such a great upbringing. I am very grateful for my family, my parents. I am really grateful for the way that they brought me up. And you know, most of the things that I do, um, I've really continued because I like them and I think that they're valuable and I'm really grateful. But I know uh, from friends and also from people who I've worked with, students, that that's not always the case. And breaking away from the habits and the personalities that our home life gives us can be very challenging. And I'm also aware that, you know, we do rub off on people around us. And I think it's important to think about the effect that, I, mean, I don't have any children, but the effect that I have on people. I am a teacher, so I want to be careful about the effect that I have on my students. And I, I have friends, I have colleagues, I want to be a positive uh, influence, I suppose, or r rubbing off of onto their lives uh, because in little ways we affect people's lives and I think it's important to consider that um, especially when you're spending a lot of time with them and especially if they're in their formative years so thank you for sharing Daniel there's some big stuff to be working through uh, that's that's great Vicky Hafler learned that she didn't need near as much as she had she has decluttered and sold and given away and thrown out lots of things I had a similar experience this year. Uh, so my wife and I, we moved houses. This is a different bookshelf than the one we started the year in front of. Uh, and we've moved into a place that has less storage. And the amount of things that we took to op shops that we gave away, that we threw out, really amazed me. You know, we'd only been living in that previous house for six years. And already just the amount of stuff that we had accumulated really was uh, a lot. And it was um, at times overwhelming for me to part with things, but I ended up finding more of a sense of catharsis. I would by no means call myself a minimalist. Um, I like things, uh, but I do agree that we don't need everything. You know, in part of this minimalization, we've, we've gone down to, we only have one car now, and we yeah, have just gotten rid of a lot of things. I don't like living in clutter. I don't like working in clutter and uh, you know, I can, I can work with a bit of it, but too much is too much and we don't need as much stuff as we think we do. I think, yeah, thinking about what humans need to survive is, I mean, there are lots of things and it's complex, but uh, when we don't need as much as we are perhaps uh, told that we need by people who want to sell us stuff. Uh, I should mention here that if you are watching with a very young person who does not uh, yet know some of the adult secrets about Christmas, it might be a good time to skip this section. You've been warned. 
okay? Then I'm not gonna be responsible for <laughs> um, ruining anybody's secrets. Cody uh, Fifield, Fifield, I'm sorry Cody if I mispronounced that, uh, shared on the Christmas tree video, so not the one that I asked for the learnings, but I wanted to share it here anyway, because it was around the same time and I think it was cool, that um, they heard some time ago about the Siberian tribesmen harvesting and dying uh, Aminata muscuri, a type of mushroom, uh, in trees as well as storing them in crates under the trees and that's where the red bulb decorations and presents under the tree came from and a quick way of drying the shrooms were to fill stockings and hang them on the mantle near the lit fire and that's where Christmas stocking came from. Uh, not sure how any of that relates to Christmas exactly but I thought it sounds believably interesting and it, it does sound plausible. I don't know if it's true. It sounds like you don't know if it's true either. Um, we hear these things often that we that sound plausible but actually aren't grounded in reality. I haven't uh, gone and researched that specifically, uh, but that might be something that I will look into in the future. Anyway, uh, Cody goes on to add that the reindeer would eat the Aminata muscuria and the tribesmen would collect the reindeer urine to drink to enhance the hallucinogenic compounds. And the Siberian tribesmen who ingested it then hallucinated into thinking that reindeer were flying. And this does sound, you know, somewhat plausible, but also I am not certain how true it is. I did a little bit of reading about this, not nearly enough to make you know, a, a full video on it. Maybe that's a date, maybe that's something for the future. But what I found is that First, reindeer are incredible creatures that people have been using to help them for many, many thousands of years, between 11 and 17,000 years of reindeer use by humans has been uh, sought to, and there's still, you know, almost as many domesticated reindeer as there are wild ones are in, on Earth now, and they're doing really well. They're extremely important animals for living, when you are living in the Arctic, you know, being able to cross really harsh terrain. They're just incredible animals, able to withstand extreme temperatures. They can live in quite warm places as well. They're very good at working in cold places. So, uh, you know, moving things from place to place is uh, something which they're really, really good at. And um, I've found that reindeer have been associated with flight for a very long time. Um, there are, there's some evidence of Mongolian mummy, so mummified remains in Mongolia, having artworks of reindeer in flight from over 3,000 years ago. And I think that's pretty cool that, um, I'm not sure why, I haven't, I need to do some more research, but it seems that, you know, at some point, um, we, we humans started thinking of reindeer as being flying creatures and certainly you know with the commercialization of Christmas including Santa with that um, that part of the folklore has really exploded as you've seen um, and I'm feeling like I'm running at the limit of what I can explain now so I will stop but I think that that's very cool so I'm not sure if it's hallucinogens or something different and uh, those are the ones that I received I was hoping to get a few more, but I am very grateful for the people who shared the things that they have been learning. And if you didn't get a chance to share, please do feel free to post in the comments below. I'd love to read the things that you have been learning this year. I am very grateful uh, for you for coming along and joining me this year. I've really enjoyed making these videos this year and sharing them with you. And I, considering that we started the year with zero subscribers, we're now approaching 700, I am uh, you're feeling good about where this channel is and where it's going. Uh, I'm still working on, you know, the different kinds of videos that I'm making and uh, the kind of style that I do that in. And I'm looking forward to seeing where these videos go in 2023. I'm really excited to continue to explore things that inspire me with a sense of curiosity and wonder. And I'm also curious as to what you uh, would like to see videos on in particular. I've got a few requests that I'm working on, um, but I'd love to know what you would like me to present in the kind of format that I have been doing. Next year, 2023, I will continue to make these kinds of videos. I am also going to start experimenting with shorts, YouTube shorts. I know YouTube is really pushing shorts and I actually made a few earlier last year, which I shared on TikTok and Instagram and I've kind of stopped doing that. I'm not a, like personally not a huge fan of watching the short form content, but I know lots and lots of people are. And I think that um, sharing these kind of little tidbits in less than a minute is a, is a nice exercise for me. 
and I think is an interesting thing to watch as well. Um, I think, you know, I think watching my videos is interesting. That's just, that's me talking. So I am gonna experiment a bit with that. Some of them you might get notifications for and appear in your feed, some of them may not. I'm gonna just be trying some different things. So uh, if you see them, uh, please don't get annoyed. I am trying different things. You will definitely not be receiving exclusively shorts. Um, there will be more of them because they're easier to make and they're short than the long form videos, but most of them will work in conjunction with the long form video where it's just kind of um, talking about a specific point from one of the longer videos uh, and probably directing people to it because that's what I'll use them for to um, get more people watching the, these longer videos. But that's something which I'll be experimenting with next year. So if you're into short form content, I hope that that really tickles your fancy. And if you're not, um, these longer videos are certainly still coming. I've got some different kinds of videos that I'd like to make. Uh, I'd like to continue to visit places. I'd like to continue doing lots of reading about things and continuing what I've been doing and perhaps even introduce a few other different kinds of videos, still within the realm of talking about things that inspire me with curiosity and wonder. I'm not sure what else to share with you right now. I'm excited about it though. So thank you so much for watching these videos this year. Again, if you haven't shared with me what you've learned this year and you'd like to, please feel free to post that down below. Um, as always, there's a link to a document with the extra resources that I used in this video. It's not as many this time because the ideas came from you, uh, but that's always there because I like for people to be able to go and explore and critique uh, and um, evaluate what I have presented according to the literature and things that are out there because I think that's important. If you're interested, that is. That'll do for now. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay curious. I will see you in 2023. I hope you have a happy and safe new year and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.